I was fortunate enough to become a multimillionaire in my mid 20s and I have learned a lot and failed a lot with money. These are some of the things that you can utilize right now in your journey to become wealthier. Number one, and it's a funny one, it's keeping up with the Joneses. Who gives a flying you know what about what your neighbor is driving? They just pulled up in a brand new car. That doesn't mean you go out there and lease a brand new car. Who cares what somebody else next door or down the street is wearing as far as jewelry? See, I grew up in a neighborhood where rims were more important than resources, where having a flashy car meant that you were somebody, or having brand new shoes on could mean the difference of you getting killed for them. And I'm gonna just share some things. Keeping up with the Joneses, especially now with social media. You look at your friends and you're looking at all these other influencers, they're flying jets all over the place, they're staying in Mykonos, they're all over the world traveling, and you think you need to be just like them, and you need to spend money just like them. What people show you on social media and in their lives may not be what's in their bank account. You know, there's a lot of people out there portraying this image of wealth, and it's a complete fallacy. So be wise, don't care about what other people are doing with their money, manage yours with the intent to grow it. Listening to others. Don't get marriage advice from people who've gone through four divorces, right? So it would be the same thing. Don't get your financial advice from some guy in a barber shop, right? Get your financial advice from people. It's okay if people have failed, it's perfectly fine. You've got one marriage, you went through it, okay, no problem. But when you're getting your advice, make sure you're not listening to everybody out there because not only are you gonna become confused, you're not gonna be able to get to where you wanna to get to because now you're being influenced by someone else. Always do your homework, always go and study what they've said, always go ahead and see if that is true what they're talking about. Just because they told you to buy into some stocks might get you hurt in the process. The other thing also involves other people. It's the fear of missing out. Look, all financial markets are created by the dynamics of human behavior how human beings react. Afraid human beings react in a particular way. Scared human beings react in a particular way. Happy human beings react in a particular way. And we have a herd-like mentality, so I could understand. So when Bitcoin goes sky high, people are running to figure out cryptocurrency left and right. If it's some picture of some monkey or mongoose or cartoon character, an NFT is all of a sudden making someone a millionaire, that fear of missing out creates a euphoria. It creates people to have that herd mentality and run to what is working and sometimes even abandon their own investment plans. So that fear of missing out is definitely keeping some of us from maintaining and getting more wealth. Next thing I wanna talk about is the partnership sync. And what I mean by this is pick your mate wisely, right? You're out there busting your tail, waking up early in the morning, working hard, and your wife is out there with a credit card just killing it, right? That's not a good partnership sync there. So be in sync with your partner. A lot of relationships are broken up and divorces happen because of financial issues. So if you are a hard worker, you're a woman, you're working hard, you've studied all your life, you're doing the right things, and your husband is at home consulting, you know what I mean? So make sure that while you're out there saving money, you're not getting Amazon packages every hour for the last 10 hours and you don't know where your money is being spent. Sit down with your partner and say, this is what I wanna establish. We need to gain control of our finances. These are our goals. This is what I wanna do. If people don't see your vision, have fierce conversations next. And if they still don't get it and you have a goal in mind and they have a different goal, well, you know what I feel about that. There's either you're gonna merge on the same plan or you're gonna execute going separate ways. Don't let other people's habits influence yours to the degree where you're gonna be miserable working for the rest of your life. The discount trap. This is one of the stupidest, silliest ones, but we all fall for it, even myself. It's where you get a coupon in the mail when you go to Kohl's or Bed Bath & Beyond and they give you a 20% coupon and now you wanna go out and spend something for something you don't even really need. I have a circle of friends that are really into watches and they'll be like, you know what, I, I got this at such a great deal. You know, I bought this for 7,000 when it cost 10 you still spent $7,000 that you could have put into something else that grew. These are the same very people that were telling me not to buy real estate. They have real estate worthy things on their wrist and they're making absolutely no money at all, but they're posting Instagram pictures of them being somewhere else enjoying vacation. Now, all the power to them, I'm probably gonna lose some friends, am I not? I think I am. Sales are absolutely no good. So the same thing with coupons and sales. If you don't need it, you don't need to get it. Even if it's on sale, it doesn't really matter. You never needed it in the first place. So don't fall victim to the discount trap. If you don't need it, don't buy it. Not having an emergency fund or a college fund or a retirement fund. You need to section out all of your different savings, right? You wanna send your kids to college or maybe you yourself wanna go to college, have a separate bank account for that. Emergency funds, I'm really big on because you never really know what country will attack who and all of a sudden someone's invaded and the stock market goes crazy and you lose your job. That sounds likely. It sounds more likely today than it did yesterday. 
If those kind of things happen, you can actually plan for your emergencies. You know exactly your old clunker or how much your car usually costs you. You know how much your house maintenance costs you a year. Annualize that expenditure and start to stick that extra cash somewhere where you can get it building that emergency fund. And yes, I do mean having an emergency fund before you go out there and buy all the different cool little picture NFTs and all the cool little coins that are coming up on the market, have an emergency fund first because you're likely to get an emergency at least once a year where your funds will be utilized. So emergency fund first. Not having an auto savings plan. You pay your mortgage, you pay your car note, you pay your rent, you pay a lot of things that are automatic these days. You know, nobody's really writing checks anymore. So why not automate your savings? Take a percentage, absolutely move it to an account you may not have access to. Now again, I'm gonna get some haters and I'm gonna just hedge you off at the pass. I'm not saying stick your money into savings. Your savings is a placeholder for you to be able to do other things with it. I'm not gonna get into a discussion about what yields the highest savings plan. As long as you have that money and you're not spending it, guess what? It's called the savings. I've talked about this in other videos as well, is a lot of people think that investing is just a hobby. Like it's something on the side that I'm going to do. If you're trying to acquire knowledge in something, you have to put time and effort and you have to be ready, willing and able to be the kind of person that will spend a few hours every day or every week to gain more and more knowledge. See, you're gonna have to put some effort into it. It's a simple road, but it's not easy. Put some time and energy right now to really master your skills when it comes to money management. Execution has to be talked about. Now, I've got friends that know a lot more than me about investing. They're conceptual, they're theorists, they're always talking about, do you know what the Wall Street Journal said today? And do you know this is what, they tell me all the facts and figures about crypto and Bitcoin and Ethereum, and this is what's going on with Tesla stocks, da 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 da. They are a wizard when it comes to facts and data and statistics, but they have yet to push that execute button. Meanwhile, I've won some money, I've lost some money, things go by, sometimes I miss opportunities, but I'm not sitting on the fence. I'm constantly executing on, on what I've learned. So don't be afraid to execute. That means don't be afraid to fill out the paperwork and start you know, your brokerage account, or don't be afraid to download that app and start investing. Just start off small, but execute. And the last thing I wanna talk about, there are different ways to get rich. There have been people who only make blazers, only make buttons, only make zippers and became multimillionaires. There are people who make straws and hats and carpet and you name it, everything that you own, that you stand on, that you wear, that you live in was created by someone. And there are many, many ways to become a millionaire. Now, this day and age, every effing person that I see has that tag entrepreneur on their Instagram. Really? Is everyone out there entrepreneur? Well, who the heck is working? Did the great resignation just create a band of entrepreneurs that are going out there and change the world? Not everybody will become a millionaire as an entrepreneur. And not everybody needs to be an entrepreneur to become a millionaire. There have been plenty of people who have had jobs that pay small amounts of money, but over time their wealth grew. I know it's nothing sexy or romantic about being a mail carrier, but mail carriers have turned out to be multimillionaires as well as bus drivers and a lot of blue collar workers. They were able to save their money, harness investing, bought real estate or bought stocks, or just really learn to master their hard earned money. So don't just be connected to this whole movement that everybody should go out there and quit their jobs and just become entrepreneurs because there's nothing sexy about losing all your shit either. So I just talked about auto savings plans. And if you wanna find out more about how to maintain your money and grow your money, I did a whole video that you can watch right now.